All right, today we are diving deep into a Proxmox setting that, you know, it looks so simple, but it is secretly one of the most important choices you can make. The CPU type. Yeah, that tiny little drop-down menu, it holds the power to make your virtual machines absolutely fly, or to make them crash and burn at the worst possible moment. Let's get into it. Look, if you've ever set up a VM, you know this exact moment. You're clicking through the wizard, everything's going great, and then you hit this menu. You get this long list of cryptic names, and you just pause. You probably think to yourself, does this really matter? Can't I just leave the default and move on? We've all been there. Well, let me tell you, the answer is a huge resounding yes. It matters a lot. This one little choice can totally change your performance, your ability to move VMs between servers, and honestly, the overall stability of your entire system. This isn't just some setting you can ignore. It's a strategic decision. So what's the decision all about? Well, it all boils down to this fundamental tug of war, this constant battle between two things you really want, raw, unfiltered performance on one side and the incredible flexibility of portability on the other. The tricky part is you can't always have both. Your choice right here determines which one wins. At its core, the CPU type setting is kind of like a translator. It dictates exactly which features and instructions from your physical, real-life CPU are going to be shown to the virtual machine. Think of it as the bridge between the actual silicon in your server and the software that's running inside your VM. Okay, so to make sense of all of this, Proxbox gives us three main families of options. I like to think of them as the contenders in this fight between performance and portability. You've got the host model, you've got the generic types, and then there's the legacy family. Let's meet them. This table really lays out the trade-offs perfectly, doesn't it? On one end of the spectrum, you've got host, maximum performance, but you pretty much give up portability. On the complete other end, you have the generic types, which flip that script entirely. Super high portability, but you take a performance hit. And then sitting right there in the middle, you have the legacy models, trying to give you a little bit of both. So let's talk about the champion of pure performance, the host setting. This is the no holds barred option. It tells Proxmox, hey, pass through every single feature, every single instruction set, everything my physical CPU can do and give it directly to the VM. There are no filters, no masks, just raw, unadulterated power. And honestly, this analogy is just perfect for the host setting. It is exactly like giving your VM the keys to a brand new sports car and just saying, have fun. It gets to use every last bit of horsepower your server's got, which means lower latency and way better throughput. It's fast. But just like a sports car, it can get, well, a little temperamental if you try to move it to a different racetrack. Now let's jump to the other end of the spectrum, the generic types, like XED664v2. Their goal is the exact opposite of host. These are all about maximum compatibility and safety. They basically hide all the newest, fanciest features and only show a common set of instructions that pretty much any modern processor is going to understand. The trade-off, of course, is performance. And the analogy here is just as vivid. Using a generic CPU type on a powerful new server, it's like buying a Ferrari and then driving it everywhere locked in first gear. Yeah, it's safe, you're not going to get into trouble, but you are leaving a massive amount of performance on the table all because the VM can't use the advanced hardware features you actually paid for. And then we have that middle ground option, the legacy models. These are cool because they mimic specific real-world CPU generations, like Westmere or Skylake. This gives you a really predictable balance. You get more features than the generic types, but it's a lot safer for migration than using host. It's actually a pretty popular choice for tricky stuff, like Windows Server, where you need that stability, but you just can't afford to be stuck in first gear. Now, I've said portability and migration a few times, but let's really talk about why this is so critical. Because, look, a slow VM is annoying, for sure. But a dead one, that's a disaster. And let me tell you, nothing will kill a VM faster than wandering into the live migration minefield with the wrong CPU type. So let me walk you through what this failure looks like. Picture this. Your VM is running happily on host A, a powerful new server. It's using a fancy feature like ABX512. You decide to live migrate it to host B, maybe a slightly older machine. Mid-flight, the system suddenly realizes that the destination CPU doesn't have that hardware. The VM is actively trying to use an instruction that literally does not exist on the new host. And the result? Incompatibility detected. VM crashes. And you might even have data corruption. It's bad news. And here's the crucial point. Virtualization is amazing, but it isn't magic. 
QMU, which is the technology under the hood, it can't just invent hardware capabilities that aren't physically there, and it especially can't do it in the middle of a live migration. If you're building your system for high availability, this is a lesson you really, really don't want to learn the hard way. Okay, so we've met the contenders, we've seen the pretty scary consequences. So how do you actually make the right choice for your specific setup? Let's bring it all together with a simple, straightforward cheat sheet. So here it is, the practical cheat sheet. Are you just running a single server or maybe a home lab with no plans to migrate stuff? Easy, use host and enjoy that speed. Are you managing a cluster where live migration is absolutely essential? Okay, then stability is your number one priority. So pick a generic type like x86-64-v2. Got a Windows VM that's acting up and being difficult? Try stepping down from host. A lot of times that can solve weird stability issues. And finally, if you're mixing Intel and AMD hosts in the same cluster, stick to the generic types. No exceptions. Just avoid that mismatch at all costs. So, you see, we've come full circle. That little drop-down menu isn't just some background noise in the setup wizard. It is a foundational choice. It's a decision that defines the entire balance of power and flexibility in your environment. And its effects are going to echo through every single reboot, every migration, and every late-night why-is-my-server-so-slow troubleshooting session. And that really brings us to the final question you should be asking yourself. Now that you understand the stakes, the pure, raw speed of host versus the rock-solid safety of the generic types, take a good look at your own Proxmox setup. Is it built for maximum speed or is it built for survival?